So it looks like there's a book coming out that details the drama behind OpenAI's firing of Sam Altman all the way back in 2023. And it kind of shines a light onto kind of what happened behind the scenes. And I feel like there's a few points here that we haven't heard before. The story interestingly begins with Peter Thiel. I actually was not aware that he was involved in any way, but now that I think about it, he's always somehow involved in some way. It seems like, right? Now, a lot of people look up to Peter Thiel, especially in the tech industry. They follow his advice. He is a mentor to a lot of people. He was part of the PayPal mafia along with Elon Musk. So if you're not familiar with Peter Thiel, so he's kind of the don of the PayPal mafia, right? Sort of like the, the, the head boss, the godfather, if you will. I will not do a godfather impersonation. Let's just continue. But we also have Max Levchin, so the CTO at PayPal, Elon Musk, of course. And David Sachs, so he's on the All In Podcast, and now the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. We have Reid Hoffman of LinkedIn and many, many others. Now, interestingly, Peter Thiel runs Thiel Fellowship, where he gives some startup funds to people that, are, that have certain ideas. His goal is to find kind of the best and brightest. And if they wanted to skip college and instead go and build their idea, he kind of helps them do that. And his track record for finding talent in the tech space is kind of astounding. So it's aimed at students aged 22 or younger, gives them a total of 100,000 over two years, as well as guidance and of other resources. There's only 20 to 25 fellows selected annually. So some of the power player alumni of the Thiel Fellowship are... For example, Vitalik Buterin, founder of Ethereum and also a self-made billionaire. Let's see if you can spot a pattern in all of these names. We have Dylan Field, the wealthiest person to go through Teal's fellowship. So he co-founded Figma, a challenge to Adobe's Photoshop. Looks like Figma got acquired for $20 billion, making Field a billionaire. We have Austin Russell, self-made billionaire at age 25. We have Joshua Browder. So he's apparently, he started Do Not Pay. Lucy Guo, so it looks like she's worth 440 million. And this is Laura Deming. So she was in the first sort of Teal Fellowship in 2011. So she started working in a lab at age 12, was enrolled at MAT by 14, and decided to drop out at 16 to pursue Teal's Fellowship. At 23, her longevity fund raised 22 million. Teal apparently also mentors or, or used to mentor Sam Altman. In fact, in November 2023, right, the same year, the same month that Sam Altman gets fired from OpenAI, Peter and Sam are sitting and enjoying a fine dining experience in LA's Arts District. So by the way, so this book that kind of originates a lot of this, it hasn't been published yet. It sounds like it talked to a number of people that were kind of insiders that went through this. So we don't yet know like all the sources quite yet. I believe the book launches in a few weeks. Meanwhile, there's multiple news outlets reporting on this. So I'm kind of just piecing everything together. So kind of keep this in mind. I'm not saying any of this is true. I am saying that this has been published by various outlets. We're kind of just beginning to put all the pieces together. So back to our conversation at the Arts Districts. So Peter Thiel is talking to Sam Altman and Peter is worried about another AI obsessed individual that he took under his wing, that he's helping to fund his institute that is largely concerned with AI alignment, AI safety. Now, this is about a year after the ChatGPT moment, the release of the ChatGPT app. So people have had time to sort of at least become familiar with it. So this is this is where talks of AI safety and stuff like that, they're, they're already taking place. It's in the news. And guess who that uh, AI obsessed prodigy with the AI Safety Institute, who that person is? It's none other than, yes, yeah, Eliza Yudkowsky. Here is Mr. Eliza Yudkowsky. Uh, he decided to jibblify himself as well, which uh, my hat's off to him. The Ghibli studio style things have been going kind of a viral recently, as I'm sure you know, driven by the new ChatGPT, the, the 4.0 model being able to produce native images. But Eliza is the original AI alignment person. He is sort of when people talk about AI doomers, he's kind of seen as the main person in, the, in that discussion. He's sort of like the poster boy, I guess, if you will, for that movement. If you haven't heard of his interviews, there are two great interviews that I've listened that I can definitely recommend. One is the Lex Friedman podcast, number 368. The other one is Dwarkesh Patel. So this is if you've ever seen kind of like this thing where he's like pointing at him going, misaligned, misaligned. That's, that's kind of where that's from. But I think to sum up some of his views in a nutshell, 
and I think you would agree with me, is that super intelligence just kills you. And I don't think that's hyperbole. I think he's literally said that to people that are saying, oh, imagine all the benefits of super intelligence. He might reply with something like super intelligence, you know, basically just kills you. And I think he does a great job of explaining sort of all the risks, all the potential risks behind developing AI. He strongly believes that it will turn out bad for the lives of humans. And he also plays a big role in the EA, the effective altruist sort of movement. And of course, you might have heard of the website Less Wrong. So that was created by him. And he's definitely seen as sort of like the leader in the AI safety space. And apparently a mentor of his, somebody that funded some of his research was Peter Thiel. And again, in November, 2023, Peter Thiel is sitting with Sam Altman and warning Sam Altman about Yudkowsky's ideas. He's saying, you don't understand how Eliza has programmed half the people in your company to believe in that stuff. That stuff being that, you know, AI is going to kill everyone on earth. And he's telling Sam, you need to take this more seriously. And so Peter Peter, it seems like he has warned Sam Altman many times before about his company being overrun by EAs. All right, so EA, effective altruism movement, EAs are people that are part of that sort of movement. Because EA recently pivoted from trying to end global poverty and other sort of causes like that, and focused a lot of the efforts on trying to prevent sort of this, this rogue AI from killing everybody on the planet, from murdering humanity. And Teal is predicting that instead EAs will sort of end up destroying open AI. And apparently they have a quote of Sam Alman responding saying, well, that was kind of true of Elon, but we got rid of Elon. So at that time, this was open AI's board, their board of directors. You had Ilya Sutskever, Helen Toner, Adam D'Angelo, Tasha McCauley, Greg Brockman, and Sam Altman. So the board of directors controls the OpenAI, the nonprofit entity, which is kind of like the, the top line entity under which everything else is formed, right? So the holding company, everything else is underneath the nonprofit, right? So the employees and other investors own sort of portions of the holding company. Microsoft owns portions of this capped for-profit company. It's all very complicated, but the point is at the, at the top of the whole thing sits the board of directors. Now, there used to be more of them, some left due to various conflicts, and for whatever reason, they, they didn't introduce new ones. Now, some rumors are saying it's in part because Sam and Greg were kind of dragging their feet in terms of getting new people introduced. But whatever the case is, so Helen Toner and Tasha McCauley, they are sort of part of that EA movement, the EA community. So kind of during this time where Peter Thiel is warning Sam Altman about the potential EA infiltration into OpenAI, four members of the board, these people up at the top, so everybody except Sam and Greg, they're holding secret meetings to try to decide whether or not to fire Sam Altman. Some of the reasons why they wanted to get rid of Sam Altman was that there were some safety breaches. So for example, there was supposed to be an oversight board that would approve any releases such as, you know, ChatGPT's new functionality that was going to be released to the people. According to some of the insiders, they're saying that Sam Altman claimed that all of them were approved by the joint safety board between them and Microsoft. It sounds like Toner found proof that only one has actually been approved. It seems like GPT-4 was launched earlier in India than the rest of the world for certain testing. And that also was without the approval of the Joint Safety Board. There were also problems with the OpenAI's startup fund. It was news to the board also that Sam Altman owned the fund personally. Now, supposedly this was just a temporary arrangement due to some tax structure and Sam Altman earned no fees or profits from the fund. It, it was an unusual arrangement. And of course, one of the big things were the release of ChatGPT, which was supposed to be a research preview, but became the fastest growing app of all time, which as later, you know, when, when we saw interviews with Sam or Greg, they were saying that nobody could have predicted that. Certainly, I, I don't know if anybody saw it coming, right? That ChatGPT moment was rather sudden. It, it didn't seem like a product launch. It, it did seem like something they expected a number of people to try, but not to get, you know, global interest. And it seems like Sutskever, Ilya Sutskever was, is potentially the person that kind of pushed the first domino. So he called Helen Toner and didn't quite tell her what was happening, but said, you know, you should talk to Mira Mirati a little bit more, kind of giving her a hint as where to go next. Mira Mirati was the chief technical officer and was basically running the day-to-day -day operations of OpenAI. Now, at the same time, there may or may not have been some conflict between Ilya and another OpenAI researcher, Jakob Pachoki. Rumors were that Sam Altman promised both of them to kind of lead the, the research direction of OpenAI. Also around this time, Helen Toner published a paper 
in which she criticized OpenAI, kind of saying that Anthropic was doing a much better job kind of over AI safety. Sam Altman was very upset over this, and allegedly he told Ilya Sutskover that Tasha McCauley, another board member, said that Helen Toner should be fired over this. And apparently they all realized that this was not the case, that those, this was a lie, because they were at that time holding their own kind of secret meetings. So whatever the case, they decide to pull the plug. And when Sam Maltman is away from San Francisco, from the Bay Area, they call him on a video call and tell him that his services are no longer needed. They, they fired him. They also remove Greg Brockman, likely because Mira Murati did not want to work uh, underneath him. So since they wanted her to just run the whole operation for the time being, they removed Greg as well. Interestingly, this is kind of a, an interesting bit of information. After that whole thing happened, the board members told Ilya Sutskover that they were pretty sure or worried or they thought that maybe he was sent as a spy to test their loyalty, right? So maybe he sort of uh, went to them to try to stir up some trouble saying, oh, you should talk to Mira. There might be some information that you need to know and kind of got the ball rolling. What if he was doing all that as sort of this uh, double agent working for Sam Altman? Now, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened, but there was one prediction that I made back in November 2023, and I stand by to this day. I'm willing to bet money on it, and that is this. This story, this will be a movie. A movie or, or a dramatic reenactment or some sort of a TV series, whatever. This boardroom drama. I mean, come on. Double agents, secret cult-like organizations, Every one of these people is like a character, basically. Ilya Sutskover would, would get all the employees together and chant, feel the AGI. I mean, just that scene alone would make a movie. Somebody has to make this. Anyway, now back then when all of this was happening towards the end of 2023, I asked all of you what your thoughts on Helen Toner were. She seemed like she was sort of like one of the main drivers behind this coup, behind the firing of Sam Altman. We got almost 4,000 votes and only 4% of the people said that she did the right things for the right reasons. 27% said that she had good intentions, like she was trying to do the right thing, but she executed poorly and, and failed. And most people said, you know, 39% here said that all bad. So just bad ideas, bad ethics, bad execution, just a complete fail. So while we might sort of disagree about her sort of intentions, most people seemingly kind of say that the handling of the situation was was a bit inept. And this was a scene almost in, in a day before the firing. So the Thursday, the day before, the four board members called Mira Murati and said that they'll be firing Sam Altman the next day and asked her to step in as the interim CEO. So she agreed, but when asked why they were firing him, they wouldn't tell her. Murati was concerned if they talked to Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft about this, if they gave him some advanced warning, they had not. They decided that Mira Murati would tell Satya right, so right before the news broke. And of course, the next day they decided to pull the trigger the whole thing becomes a worldwide headline. Everybody wants to know what happened. So at this point, they still haven't told anyone anything. They didn't tell Sam Altman or Greg or Mir Mirati. And the only thing that they're saying is that Sam Altman wasn't consistently candid with the board. So after the firing, the employees, the executives, they're all meeting with opening eyes aboard, right? The four remaining board members, and they're baffled about what's happening. No one knows anything, right? So Sides and Adela running Microsoft reports are that he was just mad. He's losing his mind because he, he's never just seen this sort of a behavior. He has no idea what happened, why it happened. They, they notified him after it happened, sounds like, before sort of the, the news broke. So he was basically finding out just slightly before the rest of the world did uh, on a Friday, not really having any time to, to respond. But most people are baffled. They say they are not aware of any specific episodes that might warrant such an outcome, right? So they're saying if he's been consistently candid, like, is there examples of that? Like, what are we talking about here? All right, so this is where it gets good. This is, this is where it gets interesting. This is where there's some like cloak and dagger stuff. The board, again, so these four people, they sort of expected Mira Murati to just handle stuff for them. They expected her to calm the employees and explain exactly what was happening and why it was happening and just kind of like continue business as usual as the board searched for a new CEO. At the time, I believe there were also some sort of conversations about potentially doing a fire sale, selling everything to Anthropic and Dario Amade because he was seen as sort of a more AI safety conscious person. But the point is that they put Mira Murati in charge. They said, you handle sort of like the, like the masses, you handle everybody, the employees, 
while we figure out what to do with the company, if we're going to put a new CEO in or just sell it off. And they expect Mira Mirati to just handle everything. Instead, Mira Mirati basically leads a company-wide revolt against the board. There's a narrative that's being spread in the company that Ilya Sutskover was mad at Jakob Pachoki because he received the promotion. They were also saying that Helen Toner was mad because Sam Altman didn't like her research paper that she published, that, that he tried to push her off the board. And look, here's the thing. Because they failed to provide a narrative or an explanation of what was happening, of course, one was going to get developed somehow, one way or another. I recall at the time sitting there, like just not knowing why, what was happening, why these things happen, anything like that. It was very frustrating. And of course, a lot of people are interested in AI development. They're concerned. So having four people do this with no explanation, first of all, the entire world is watching. There's no explanation for why it's happening. Like you could have predicted that this wasn't going to end well. So what happens by Monday morning is that all of them sign a letter threatening to quit if Sam Altman isn't reinstated. So Mira Mirati, most of the people at OpenAI, Satya Nadella, meanwhile, is saying that you guys are all welcome to join the Microsoft Corporation. So most people at the company are signing that letter saying they're, they're quitting, they're leaving unless Sam Altman is brought back. Interestingly, among all the signatures are one, Mira Mirati, and two, Ilya Sutskover. At this point, Sam Altman is brought back. Helen Toner and uh, Tasha McCauley, I guess they're just kicked out. Adam D'Angelo, I don't know if he temporarily left or what happened, but he's still on the board. So here's the opening at website. So Adam D'Angelo is still listed as one of the board members. So that's quite a wild story, right? So Peter Thiel, that same month that happened is warning Sam Altman about the EA people that are going to destroy OpenAI within weeks. They lead a coup against Sam Altman. They fire Sam Altman. Potentially, Ilya Sutskover maybe is the one that started this. But largely, it sounds like driven by Helen Toner. Again, as far as we can tell, I have no idea exactly. Then over the weekend, the whole thing turns around. Now, Mir Mirati and Ilya Sutskover are signing the document saying, hey, we're going to quit unless we bring Sam Altman back. And then a short while later, the people that are associated with EA are gone. Now, of course, since then, Ilya left OpenAI and started his own company, SSI, Safe Superintelligence. Mir Mirati left and started her own company. So kind of a fascinating turn of events. It sounds like the book is going to have even more interesting details. But I'm curious to know what you think about this whole thing. Was this a failed coup? It was just people that were, you know, part of the EA movement that were concerned with AI safety. They found things where Sam Altman wasn't 100% consistently candid, like they said, and they figured that they needed to kind of exercise their authority, their role as the board to try to get him out and, and bring somebody else in. And this was just, they, they fumbled the execution of that. Or do you think that this may have been something more nefarious? They, they just wanted to bring in somebody that kind of saw everything the way that they did. Maybe somebody that was also part of the EA, EA movement, somebody that also believed that there's a high X risk from AI. Or do you think this was some sort of a double cross where Peter Thiel is like, hey, here's what you need to do to get rid of these people and get them off the board. And maybe Ilya Suskover, maybe Mir Mirati did have some role to play in that. Let me know what your take on this is. I'm, I'm very curious. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth and I'll see you next time.